Welcome. We will talk about ETFs. I'm sitting here with uh, Carl Höck, responsible for uh, Luxor's ETFs in the Nordics. Welcome. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's take it from the top. What is an ETF? Okay, so an ETF is basically a fund that uh, combines the, the best of a, of a fund or an index fund with uh, the fact that it trades on an exchange. So it's like a stock. So you take a fund and a stock and match them together and you get yeah. the best of both worlds, basically. You said index fund. Does they have to be indexed or could they be active? Uh, there are active funds. It's yeah. quite new and quite rare. Uh, yeah. Only a few out of our 300 ETFs at Luxor are, are, are have some kind of active component. And uh, if you look at the whole market, uh, even globally, it's maximum, I would say, 1% of the, of the market that belongs to active ETFs. So it's all about index funds, really, that track uh, broad indices, typically. Yeah. And, and you get them for quite a low management fee. So that's, that's one of the uh, benefits of using uh, ETFs. Absolutely. So they're very, very cheap, uh, ranging from uh, the, the cheapest ETF in Europe happens to be a Luxor ETF. Uh, it starts at four basis points or 0.04% uh, total expense ratio. So the yearly fee is just uh. below 10 basis points. This and basis. what ETF is that? Uh, it's a core Morningstar US ETF. Uh, so it tracks uh, a US equity index, which is quite similar to the stock uh, the S&P 500 index. So it's, it's I think, it's 99.9% .9 correlated with, uh, with the S&P 500 index. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's uh, quite... Yeah, quite so you get the cheaper. US market. So what's for a global index, uh, stock market index fund? Yes, yeah, so we, have, we have various different global uh, ETFs or global uh, equity market ETFs. And, uh, but the cheapest one is our MSCI Core World product. It, it uh, costs uh, 12 basis points, so it's 0.12% uh, yearly fee. So incredibly cheap, and uh, I would say that's one of the main uh, factors of, of the success of ETFs. But there are, there are many other factors, such as the fact that there you get instant diversification yeah. uh, when you buy an ETF, but also they're extremely liquid on exchange, so they trade on various different exchanges. And uh, also the fact that they, the performance of the ETFs are good enough, if you like. So they, they don't try to beat the benchmark, uh, no. but they don't lose out either. So uh, it, it has been proven You many know times. what you get. Exactly, and also uh, not just that, but you actually get a better performance on average than you do from active funds as they typically fail. Yeah, they underperform or the management fee is too high, so they underperform. The combination of those yeah. two make them typically... Uh, yeah, but so an ETF, it's a fund, you get the diversification part, but it's traded real time like a stock. Correct. Um, and you said you could get, uh, I mean, one of the benefits is that you get a broad range of uh, diversification in different sectors, different uh, thematics uh, and, and uh, other things like yeah. that. Could you explain a bit? Yeah, so basically you can buy, just clicking one button, you can yeah. buy uh, one ETF unit that uh, indirectly gives you access or ownership of perhaps 2,000 equities in one go. So 2,000 stocks, boom, in one click. Or uh, f let's say 500 green bonds uh, in one go with just one click of a button, which is quite amazing. Uh, or there are, of course, other ways to split it, like uh, you could buy niche funds such as, I don't know, India or Russia or whatever. So there oh, yeah, yeah. Sectors uh, and various different yeah. uh, thematics we've launched recently. Green bond, you said that's a corporate bond, so it's an interest fund. It could be corporate bonds or governmental bonds that specifically have green purposes. Correct. So yeah. if you invest in that product, you buy bonds which help to finance the green economy. So they, they are earmarked each and every bond to go to a specific project. And that is actually verified by a third party organization to make sure that uh, ah. the money is not going to incorrect uh, places. But speaking about green investments, uh, ETFs are quite often used for just uh, for, for that specific purpose to get uh, green investments. Uh, correct. Yeah. So uh, more and more we see that uh, people want to invest in ESG and uh, yeah. sustainable products. And uh, if you look at the flows during this year, uh, there has been a massive inflow of uh, around 20 billion euros into ESG, uh, some kind of ESG type of ETFs. So it's, it's one of the absolutely biggest growth areas for uh, for the, I, mean, I would say, most financial investments. Uh, and it's very inter now, interesting now to see that the e EU and the regulator has come up with uh, some new uh, climate, um, uh, climate benchmarks or uh, echo labels. Uh, ah. So this is the first time that the major regulator actually goes into an index and say, you have to do this and that if you're going to receive this label. So they have one label called EU CTB, which is Client Transition Benchmark, and another one called Paris Aligned Benchmark. They are quite similar. Both are about reducing carbon dioxide, CO2. Uh, 
Um, so uh, one is a bit uh, stricter than the other, yeah, yeah. if you put it that way. But so it, it's, it's a label for the financial instrument, uh, sort of like when I go into a grocery store and I find the locally produced or the eco-friendly uh, food, shampoo, or, yeah, shampoo yeah, or, exactly. or things like that. So it's the same, but for financial products. Correct. And yeah. there, there are some labels like that already existing, okay. but not from major regulators. So it's basically private companies and uh, various different organizations that have created these uh, eco-labels. But now you have, hopefully, this, uh, hopefully the EU will create a standard or yeah. that everyone hopefully will follow and uh, so it will be possible to shift massive amounts of money into, into this uh, type of industry. Yeah, B because uh, sustainable investment that, ha that have been a buzzword for quite some time now and banks and other financial institutes have used that in marketing purposes. So now, now we'll get like a real standard. Well, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully yeah. we will. Uh, I mean, it's up to the investors to decide what to buy. But yeah. I mean, g further down the line, maybe in a couple of years, maybe the EU will force investments into this. That we don't know yet. But no, uh, no. to start it off, it's voluntary. And uh, if you follow these indices, you, you promise to reduce uh, the carbon dioxide levels uh, enough so that our planet doesn't warm up more than maximum one and a half or mm. two degrees, depending on which of these products you buy. But uh, so it's in line with the IPCC, this, um, uh, this panel on climate change uh, targets that was uh, agreed upon in, in the Paris, uh, Paris Agreement. Yeah. So it will be very interesting to, to see how this develops. So at Lixor, you have a broad range of ETFs, both the eco labels and another thematic ETFs, right? Yeah, so we have a different type of uh, ESG and climate ETFs. So we have an ecosystem of these new EU. Uh, EU labeled yep. ETFs. So we have a range of PAB funds for different regions, and then we have a, a range of this climate transition benchmark. And we use both MSCI and, and SP to, to track this basically because we don't know what investors prefer, so they get the choice of, of, of both kinds. Uh, but also, we have uh, thematic uh, ESG ETFs that meet the UN uh, so called SDGs, the, the Sustainable Development Goals that the UN have set up, this colorful chart of uh, various different goals. So we have some ETFs that map into this so world water for example and new energy so if you buy into the let's say new energy fund you will buy a, a, a basket of stocks that uh, oh. are active in the uh, new energy space yeah but also we have like filtered broad funds such as an emerging market fund that is um, following some MSCI ESG trend leader uh, index, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's various different types of ESG yeah. and SRI ETFs. And a great news uh, is that we have added on some Luxor ETFs in the Nordnet monthly savings uh, ETF savings. Uh, feature. Yes, we're very happy about that because yeah. that I think it's a great feature for the for the savers to be able to do it yeah. on a monthly basis. And uh, so we offer some some of our super cheap core ETFs, uh, such as the MSCI World at 12 basis points TR, but also the uh, core Morningstar US at four uh, basis points, 0.0% uh, fee, which is the cheapest ETF in Europe, uh, is available to for the savers to to use. Great, great news. Carl, uh, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you very much for being here. And thank you for listening.